www.jesuschrist.com. There is a great opportunity for you to study the Bible. You know, in John 8, in chapter number 44, the Bible says that the devil is a liar. We're going to be looking today at lies of the devil. Now, in John 8, 44, we find that Jesus said to those folks on that occasion, you are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not, listen, to, abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he, listen to this, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now, my friend, all of us know that lying is wrong. Now, that's, I mean, the, the whole foundation, folks, of the devil is lying. Now, we know it's wrong. For an example, if you go to Acts 5 uh, and you'll read about Ananias and Sapphira, notice what Acts 5 verse 3 says. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan, now watch this, why has Satan, what do we read in John 8, 44? The Bible said that the devil is a liar and he is the father of it. Now we come down to Acts chapter number 5 and verse number 3. And Peter said to Ananias, Why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? So what they had done, they had, brought, they had sold land, brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet, but they lied about the amount. Now, didn't, they could have kept part of it. didn't matter. Selected. Screen but recording. what they did Button. is they lied about it. But notice again that the devil is the father of lies. In the book of John, 1 John 2, verse number 4, the Bible says, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments. The Bible said he is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So when you and I study the scriptures and we look at the devil, we look at what he tries to do. Uh, you know, there's a great illustration, we won't go into detail with it, but uh, you can read 1 Kings 13 of the, of the young prophet, uh, and the older prophet came out and said, I too am a prophet, but he lied. 1 John chapter number 2, verse number 22, the Bible said, Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is an antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. What do we find? Over and over again, folks, we see that the devil is the very foundation and is the very background of lying. 1 John 4, verse 20, the Bible says, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, watch this, the Bible says he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Now, my friend, that just makes great sense, doesn't it? And so when you and I look and talk about this concept of lying, uh, then certainly we understand the devil is the father of lies. In the book of Proverbs, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Proverbs chapter number 6. If you read all of the verses, verses 6 through 19, uh, the Bible said there are six things the Lord hates, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Oh, a proud look, but look at the next one. A lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises uh, wicked imaginations, feet that are swift to running to mischief, false witness that speaketh, watch this, false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. When I, when I look at Proverbs chapter 6, and I see a false witness uh, that speaketh lies, go back to the Old Testament. We don't have time to examine this uh, surely in a, in a matter of just a few minutes that we'll have here. But when you go back, you remember Ahab and Jezebel? And Ahab wanted the, uh, wanted the land uh, of Naboth because it was next to his. And Naboth said, I want to sell it. You know what they did? They searched out and got false witnesses to lie. And they took Naboth's vineyard. Now, the Bible says, Proverbs 6, in verse number 19, a false witness that speaketh lies. So if someone is a witness and they speak lies... Certainly that's a violation of the will of God. In Revelation chapter number 21, in verse number 8, uh, here is a, a passage of Scripture. It's kind of interesting because, uh, you know, the Bible does not identify, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Bible doesn't identify, you know, we have big lie, little lie, or, well, is that, that's just a white lie. My friend, listen to this. A lie is a lie. And in Revelation chapter number 21, in verse number 8, 
The Bible says, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers, now idolaters all fit in here, but now watch this, and all liars. Can you imagine that? All liars fit into the same category as a murderer, as a whoremonger, as a sorcerer, as an idolater. And the Bible said, All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And so when you and I look at lying, and the Bible says the devil is the father of lies. Now, there are five of these that we're going to just briefly mention in our lesson today. And I want you to just take a piece of paper and write these down and uh, search out the scriptures. Number one is this. Number one, lie of the devil. I, got, I, I don't know if you can say, well, one and one and two. I've got five of them. Number one, lie of the devil, and it is that the word of God is not true. Now, in Genesis chapter number three, Verses 1 through 5. Remember what the Bible says? That the serpent uh, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Ah, uh, God said, Don't eat it. Oh. And the woman said unto the serpent, Well, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. But it was a lie, folks. The Bible said, For God knoweth, he said that the day that you eat thereof, that your eyes will be open, uh, you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. And so the devil again, see, the devil said, You don't have to pay attention to the word of God. Now I want you to listen to this. In the book of John, chapter number 8, verses 31 and 32, the Bible said, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue, watch this, in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The devil, folks, has been very successful in this lie because many people in the world, including Americans, no longer respect the word of God as authority. You can see this in many ways in what is being taught in America today. Let me just give you some examples of what I'm talking about. You see people, for an example, using God's name in vain, and many who make fun of the Christian lifestyle. You constantly are hearing folks using the OMG uh, phrase. Secondly, many are teaching today that, well, you don't need to be so narrow-minded and, and accept other people's gods. Huh? Don't be narrow-minded. The Bible said there's one God. The Bible says there are those who are idolaters. In Matthew chapter number 7, Jesus said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But see, many are teaching today, well, you shouldn't be so narrow-minded, and you, you should be willing to accept other people's gods. What about this one? Many are teaching, listen to this, they're teaching us to kill unborn babies, and they call it women's choice. Uh, others are teaching that we need to change our understanding on what the Bible teaches on homosexuality and call an alternative, or they call it an alternative lifestyle. Many say the Bible is wrong when it comes to raising your children. They, they well, now, now don't you, now don't you ever do so. Now don't you whoop them little things, huh? You're going to ruin their self-esteem. No. No, you're going to find that they're going to go do what they want to do if they don't have any discipline. See, America, ladies and gentlemen, here's what, here's what many in America want you to believe today. They want you to believe that the Bible is wrong when it comes to the origin of life. They want you to believe that life took billions of years and we evolved from some lower form of animal. Finally, folks, America wants us to believe that there are no absolute truths. You know, just, well, just, you know, they're, 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 you just can't really rely on that. That's not an absolute truth. My friend, listen, the Bible teaches us all Scripture given by inspiration of God. But when you look at the Holy Word of God and you see what has taken place 
over the period. See, you know, and I, well, this has been mentioned on this program before, you and I know that the Bible was written for about, uh, by about 40 men over a period of 1,600 years. But my friend, all the way through the Holy Word of God, we find again the same message. And that is the message of salvation, see. But the world wants you and I to understand. They want us to believe. Oh, preacher, there's no absolute truth. Yes, there is, folks. And that is the Word of God. And the Bible, Jesus said this in John 12 and verse 48, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my word hath one that judgeth him. The words that I speak unto you, they shall judge you in the last day. The devil's lie is that the Bible is not the Word of God. You don't have to worry about it. Let me give you the second one. And that is this. Well, folks, now just write this down. God will make an exception in my case. You know, here's a person. I remember, oh, this is probably 55 years ago. There was a man who had absolutely no concept of Christianity. See, now in Joshua 7, in verse number 21, I, I want you to look at that verse because you remember this is Achan. And Achan, Joshua has found out that it was Achan who had stolen uh, from Jericho. And now here's what Achan said after he'd been found out. He said, when I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I coveted them, and I took them. And behold, they're hid in the earth in the midst of our tent, and the silver under it. See, Achan had this idea, well, I can hide this from God. And so this idea that, see, we, have, we believe God's going to make an exception in our case. Now, let me go back to the illustration. I, there was a, he had absolutely no inclination to do the will of God. To my knowledge, he had never worshipped God. He had never obeyed the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he deceased. I preached his funeral. But I will never forget that day. I'll never forget how that the family was saying, Oh, we're going to meet you someday in heaven. My friend, listen to this. They were saying, God's going to make an exception in your case. You're going to, you can live like you want to live. Do what you want to do. Act like you want to act. God will make an exception in your case. That's what apparently Achan may have thought. Now, I want you to look at this, folks. God did not make an exception for, Lot, for Lot's wife. Go to the book of Genesis, chapter number 19. You remember God said, Lot, get out of here. Do not look back. <laughs> it isn't funny, but it is ridiculous that men will reject the will of God and Lot's wife, the Bible says she looked back. Did she think, well, God will make an exception? God's not going to do this? Noah, or excuse me, Lot, God said, do not look back. Miss Lot looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. Let me give you another illustration. In Leviticus chapter number 10, verses 1 through 5, the Bible tells us about two men by the name of Nadab and Abihu. Now, if you go to Leviticus chapter 1, verse number 7, uh, the Bible says they were to put fire on the altar uh, and they were to offer a sacrifice unto God. Now, but in Leviticus chapter number 10, the Bible says that Nadab and Abihu put fire in their censer and offered strange fire before God. You know what? I doubt that they had any really major discussion. I don't know. I wasn't there. Uh, you, you know, the Bible doesn't tell us. It's kind of an interesting statement here. They offered strange fire from the, before the Lord. Fire came down and consumed them. It only takes it just two or three verses. Now watch this. Do you suppose Nadab and Abihu, they thought, well, you know what? Well, now God won't do anything to me, us for this. Uh, let, let's, let's just see what happened. Well, we know what happened. God's going to make an exception in my case. Those of you who are observing this program, you're listening, you're watching, and you may have the idea that, well, I know I don't do what God wants me to do. I know I don't do, I don't obey the God. God will have an exception in my case. No, he won't. No, not according to the Bible. Let me give you another example. 
in the book of 2 Samuel chapter number 6. The Bible tells you, see, the, the Philistines had the ark of God. David said, we've got to go get that ark. And so, man, this is the ark of God. You don't... Man, get, let's get a, let's get these ark. Let's get us a new cart and get this all thing. We'll go up there and get it. They did, and they came across the threshing floor, and here was us. Uh, and, and man, he respected the ark. And as they went across that threshing floor, that thing shook. Uzzah well, put his hand to make sure it didn't fall. He died. Maybe he thought, well, I, I'm just doing. I'm just I'm protecting the ark. God will make an exception in my case. But he didn't. There was a certain requirement regarding uh, carrying the ark. God had given them a specific way in which to do it. Uh, one family of the tribe of Levi, they were to carry the ark. Uh, they had rungs on the side to put a pole in it and carry it on the shoulders of men. See, but God will make an exception in my case. Let me listen to this now. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Listen to what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. Not every man that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he which doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will come to me in that day, and they'll say, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? And in your name cast out devils, and in your name do many wonderful works, but I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You know what he said? He had the audacity to even say, you're workers of iniquity. Oh, God, God overlooked my case. No, ladies and gentlemen, that's a lie of the devil. Number three, let's go, let's go to the third one. Uh, the third lie of the devil is, and the boy, let me tell you, he swamped a whole lot of people with this one. You don't need to assemble with the saints of God uh, or I put that in for it, go to church all the time. <laughs> I remember several years ago, Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. Uh, let, let's read that, and let me give you an illustration of that. Hebrews 10, 24, and 25, the Bible says, Let us consider one, consider, excuse me, one another to provoke unto love the good works, not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Uh, I re several years ago, the illustration of this is kind of interesting. There was a couple... Uh, we were living in Michigan, and uh, this one very fine couple, that brother now is an elder of the church where I preached formerly, but uh, at any rate, uh, they were going, getting in their car one Sunday evening to go to the service of the church. They had next-door neighbors and next-door neighbors. See, their concept was, well, you go to church only if you're a bad sinner. And the, the next door neighbor said, you guys must, you must be doing an awful lot of bad things. You have to go to church so much. Lie the devil. See, the devil says, you, you, you don't need to assemble with the saints of God. My friend, just go to McDonald's on Sunday morning at 9.30. Go to a donut shop. Go to a fast food place. What are you going to find? You're going to find individuals who are not going to worship God. But let me say this, ladies and gentlemen, just as soon as a tragedy occurs, oh, I've got to go to God. My friend Jesus said, Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All of these things shall be added unto you. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 1 and 2, Paul said, As I've given order to the church of Galatia, even so do ye upon the first day of the week. Let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. What do you, when do you do that? Paul? On the first day of the week. Do what? On the first day of the week. Let me give you another one because it just undergirds uh, or goes along with what Paul said, 1 Corinthians number 16, Acts 20 and verse number 7. The Bible said upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, Jesus continuing his speech until midnight, ready to depart on the morrow. Now, look at what we've got. Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The Bible says, Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some. I had someone tell me the other day, I was there, there was an individual, have not been attending services. Got in touch with him. I said, look, 
You've not been attending. Well, we watch television. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we want you to watch our program. But that is not a substitute for worship on the Lord's Day. You can get in your big chair, and you can sit in that chair, and you can watch every religious program you want to watch and die and go to hell as a result of failure to do the will of God. That's a lie of the devil. When he says, you don't need to assemble with the saints of God. You don't need to go to church all the time. Well, that's not going to mean it. Yeah. My friend, listen to this. That is a lie of the devil. Let me give you a fourth thing. Following the word of God is too hard and too restrictive. Now, in 1 John 5, verse 3, notice what the Bible says. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Now, see, the the commandments of God are not grievous. See, this idea, well, oh, you know, the Bible, uh, I mean, that, man, that's saying you're just too hard. I can't, no, 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 ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. In the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 11, verses 13 through 15, the Bible says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. See, that's the devil's teaching. First, sorry, uh, Psalm 144, verse number 15, the Bible said, Happy is that people that is in such a case, yea, happy is that people, watch this, whose God is the Lord Turn your Bibles. Write this down. Read it later. You might not have time right now. But read Proverbs 16, 20. He that handleth the matter wisely shall find good. And whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. Men who trust in men. See, folks have that. Well, now the Bible, now brother, brother, they cut the Bible just too restrictive. Uh, we, can't, we can't do whatever. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. Listen. There is a great illustration back in the Old Testament. First Samuel chapter number 12. Write this down. Read it later. Let me just give you the essence of this. The people had been in bondage in Babylon. While they were there, they married the women who were idolaters. They married these pagan women. Well, the Old Testament law forbid that. And so when they came back, they had to learn that God meant what he said in his holy word, and they needed to be a part of it. Now, let me go to number five. There are many ways to heaven. That's a lie of the devil. The Bible says, Matthew 7, 13 and 14, Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, see, folks say, well, now, you, uh, you got your way and I've got my way and, and we're all going to end up in heaven. No, we're not. No, no. Folks, that's a lie of the devil. 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 13, Paul writes to the Corinthian church, he said, I beseech you in the, in the name or by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ that you all speak the same thing, that there be no division among you, that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. It's been reported unto me of you, my brethren, by them of the house of Chloe. There are content. So I'm a Paul, I'm Paulus, I'm Cephas, I'm Christ. There's only one way, ladies and gentlemen, to go to heaven, and that's through Christ. In John chapter number 14, verse number 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Listen to this. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Galatians 3, 27 says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. My friend, there will be a judgment day. Let me encourage you. The lies of the devil, the word of God is not true. God will make an exception in my case. You don't need to assemble with the saints and go to church all the time. Following the word of God is too hard and too restrictive. Oh, there are many ways to heaven. Every single one of those is a lie of the devil. Let me encourage you to do the will of God. It's always a joy to study with you. Thank you for being a part of our program today. May God bless you.
speaking on this program is Jim Dearman. Robert Young, board chairman of the great New York Central Railroad and an important voice in several other lines, was considered the most powerful and most debated railroad tycoon of his day. Young drank deeply of the drafts of life under the sun. Time says Bob Young had collected all the prizes of a champion battler, wealth, power, glittering friends such as the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, palatial homes in Palm Beach and Newport. Yet this 60-year-old millionaire magnate, as he beheld his power on the decline, committed suicide. One is reminded of the words of Solomon who said, I looked on all the works my hands had wrought and on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. May we show you where true riches are found? Now it's time for a GBN Daily Lift. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. Acts chapter 4, verse 32. It's 11 o'clock. You're listening to WJH. Media controls selected. Previous track selected. Playback destination. Previous play. Next mock screen brightness. Volume focus selected. Music hearing device music selected. Screen recording.